OK, I have a third example, uh, which is this time the same input circuit, uh, but this time I've changed the resistor for a capacitor. Uh, this is something that I know that people like to do, is to put capacitors on the output of the circuit and to charge them up. Well, if we're going to charge them, we need some way of measuring charge. As luck would have it, there's a chap called Mr. Coulomb many years ago who decided that charge would be called uh, Coulombs. Actually, I'm not entirely sure it was he who decided it, but uh, anyway, the unit of electrical charge is called a coulomb. And a bit like the power in the previous example, there are two ways of calculating it. We can say that the charge, which is designated by Q, is equal to current times time. Uh, or if we're dealing with a capacitor, we can say that Q is the value of the capacitor times the voltage. So, for example, if we have our circuit, which comprises the standard input circuit, and an output circuit charging a capacitor. For the input, uh, if the time is 10 seconds, so we run this thing for 10 seconds, or we measure it over a 10 second period, which is probably easier to do, uh, and we measure an average current of 0.1 of an amp, then we can say the total charge, Q, is 0.1, which is the current, times the time, which is 10 seconds, which is 1 coulomb, so 1 coulomb of charge. On the output side, we might have a capacitor of a value 2200 microfarad, which is the same as 2200 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. OK, and we're measuring capacitance in farads. So the calculation becomes um, 10 volts, because after our 10 second period, we measure 10 volts on our capacitor. And Q equals 2200 times 10 to the minus 6, that's the value of the capacitor, times the voltage after 10 seconds, which is 10 volts and that gives us a total calculated value of charge in the capacitor of 0.022 coulombs. So again we can see the charge output is 0.22, the charge input is 1 coulomb, so again we're not close to over unity, not even terribly efficient. But I would stress that I've just made up these figures for the purposes of uh, this example and just wanted to demonstrate uh, the ways in which uh, we can measure current, voltage, charge, uh, anything you want to measure. Um, but you just have to measure the same thing on the input and the output in order to satisfy people that the figures you're producing are valid. Uh, it is not good enough to say I've got a 4 volt battery on the input, I'm charging a 6 volt battery on the output. Because we don't know what the capacity of those batteries is, we would have to start with totally discharged batteries. We would have to charge them for a period of time. We would then have to discharge them and measure the total capacity of those batteries over that period of time. And then we would have some proof. Um, but just saying this is a dead battery and it's now full of life is not good enough. Just to light light bulbs is not good enough. How much energy did you have to start with? How much energy did you put into the system? How much energy can you demonstrably get out of the system? And if you can produce those figures, then I think then you've got something which will be useful. And if we were to go back to our original definition of coefficient of performance between 0 and 1, or efficiency between 0 and 100%, uh, what might be interesting for a lot of these circuits and a lot of these designs is to see how they really perform and then we can have some proper comparisons. Uh, I've been looking at this sort of thing for several months now, including the Griggs pumps and the Mayer systems of hydrogen or brown gas production. And um, there's very little in the way of measurement that I can see, even by Bedini himself, that stands up to, uh, to close scrutiny. And uh, I would encourage anybody doing the, any sort of experiments like this to try and produce... Um, some sort of evidence um, and and figures maybe so that we can look at the most efficient systems and the, the you know and actually demonstrably prove that these some systems are more efficient than others. So I hope that's been helpful. I don't mean in any way to be critical of any work that anybody's done. I know there's a huge amount of activity and a lot of enthusiasm, and it's very very important that that carries on, um, particularly if we can crack this problem. But it is very very important at the end of the day that uh, any work that's done is documented in a way, or dem demonstrated in a way, uh, where efficiencies can be proved and uh, therefore we've got some sort of benchmarks to work from. Okay, thank you very much for your time and uh, happy building.